Welcome to CBR TV. I'm Jonah Wyland in the Speakeasy. Sitting to my right are actors Nichols Brennan and James Marsters. You know them best as uh, Spike and Xander from Buffy. Thank you guys very much for coming in here. Yeah. We're not here to talk about the old show, though. We're here to talk about the new stuff you guys got going on. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, we have a surprise for you. Everybody who comes out gets a special gift. You get a yeah. CBR cowbell. Oh, that's oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, I can annoy people with this. <laughs> Wow. Do your homework, honey! You guys have the That's price good. tag on. Oh, did I? I yeah, what does it say? What is the price? Four ninety five. Oh well, this it was it was actually less than that. I'm sorry. We're gonna put this down for the interview, though. I assume. If you want, if you if you get really upset with me, you could use it as a weapon. Like if you if you interrupt me, Nick, then I'm just gonna give you the cowbell. That's, you've been doing That's that for years. My turn to talk now. <laughs> like this is your first cowbell. <laughs> Well, let's start with the comics. You guys are, are both writing uh, Buffy comics, and I, I want to start with the, the the fact that this is a pretty rare experience where actors from a show that now is, gosh, how old is the show now? 15, 20? It started in 98, 80, 80 years ago. Right? Okay. Yeah. It's still pretty rare for actors to write their own characters from a TV show, and here you guys are doing it. You've done it before, even. I, why? Were you guys all, I know you were a comic fan growing up too, but were you guys, was everybody on the set comic fans? Like, was this something you ever thought you'd be doing? Well, I think Joss was definitely a comic fan. Certainly. I was a comic fan. I don't know. Do you didn't like comics? No. Not at all. I never read him as, I was a baseball player as a child. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I found that. I had a really bad stutter and was very shy, so when I discovered baseball, that's all I did. That kind of brought I it read, um, an Archie comic once, and I was on page two, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, I just, what are you, what are you off. doing? That's lame. Wow. So th that's, if it wasn't, Archie killed. And I remember I was, I was in Big Bear, too, which is up in the San Bernardino Mountains here, and it was snowing outside. I was like, probably seven or eight. We had a cabin up there. Mm -hmm. The most romantic, it's snowing, as I got a, like oh, a, a nice little light up there. We're up, you know, and I'm like, I'll fucking read a comic. And it's like... And if Big Bear is snowing, there's a fire downstairs, if that can't save me, okay. I mean, it was horrible. Uh, uh, Frank Miller, Daredevil series. Then you'll get addicted to comics. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wish I was eight again. No, no. It'll happen now. You don't It'll happen now. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Frank Miller, Daredevil, it's Dark Knight, Watchmen, yeah. all that stuff from the yeah. 80s when comics really kind of became a new medium. Oh, you, you That's you, when I was eight. I was, see, that sucks. I wish I'd known about it then. You should have called me. I wish I had known that you, you were, were alive. <laughs> But so like how Besto. did so how did you guys writing comics come up? Was this something yeah. you guys suggested, or did Dark Horse come to you? I um I actually this the story that I had started years ago. Um, Joss called me up and wanted to know if he uh, we could do a TV movie on uh, Spike, and I said, um, man, I'll do anything that you want to do. Um, what do you got? And he goes, I got nothing. I got no ideas at all. I got a line from a movie. I'm like, okay, give it to me. He goes, okay, this is from Lord of the Rings. This is Aragorn. Uh, uh, something about, I have no hope for myself, but I hope for all of you people. It's before he goes off to war. And I'm like, well, that's very serious, Joss. And he's like, well, what do you got? And I said, actually, I have this idea. And I, um, I, wanted, I, wanted, uh, I wanted Spike to actually proactively have a plan and implement it. As a secondary character, you're mostly reacting to other people's plans. Sure. And that's, you know, that's your job. That's fine. But I was thinking uh, it would be fun to have... Spike, you know, wake up in the morning and say, I want this, and go out and get it. And, uh, and I thought that it would, it would be cheesy if he accomplished anything too large. So I thought that he should accomplish the smallest thing that I could think of. And I had an idea that, that Spike would be, having just gotten a soul and just broken up with Buffy, that he would be having a hard time surviving because he can't really mug anybody anymore for <laughs> what he needs, sure. and he will not get a job. So he's homeless, he's starving to death, his clothes are falling apart, uh, and his boot is so mangled that he's, losing, he's almost losing fights because his soul is like flapping around. And I thought, uh, what if there was a story where he loses the girl, he loses the fight to the monster, he tries to play hero and gets his butt kicked, but he does find a way to get a new pair of boots okay. without hurting anybody, without stealing them, and without getting a job. How, what was Joss's reaction? He said, that's a wonderful idea. That's cheap to film. <laughs> I said, you know what? I wrote it for you, dude. That's good. And uh, uh, for legal reasons that were beyond either one of our control, it couldn't get off the ground. And so that idea just kicked around in my head. And I was just talking backstage at a Comic-Con to George's Gentry. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was like, well, make a comic out of it. My God. And he put me in touch with Scott Alley. And Scott thought it would make a pretty good book. And so we did it. Wow. 
Very organic, very cool. What about you? How did you get in, it, it sucked into this? I don't really know. I, I, I think I was at Comic-Con on a, on a Buffy uh, panel with, uh, with Scott Alley and then Jane, and then I just kind of, it just, I don't know. I mean, I just said, yeah, all right. And I think that just kind of just kind of came came from that. Okay. I'm like, yeah, I would like to. It, was, it wasn't that really thought out. I'm like, sure. All right. Well, let, I'm let, kind of, yeah, that's kind of how I live my life. It, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's here. Let's do it. Okay. Let's start. Let's start with you. You're uh, writing uh, with Christos Gage, mm -hmm. uh, part of season ten, uh, the, the the regular Buffy series. Uh, I believe it might be the first time one of the actors has actually worked on the on the main title. Yeah. Because I know Juliet Landau has done some of her own stuff with her own character, and you, you've done your own stuff. Uh, first off, talk about working with Christos and the story that you guys are crafting together here. Um, he's awesome. He really, really is. Because I had never, uh, I've written things, but it's never been in the format of, because I didn't even know how. The, the first comic I'd, I, I had read after Archie was I started reading some Buffy stuff just to kind of see what the format was like. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's, he's wonderful. So it's uh, basically, it's like, I punch up jokes, you know, and like, you know, Giles is a little kid again, so I'm like, we need him to be saying and looking at boobies more. Yeah. He needs to be like, he's got that crusty thing. We need him to kind of just have a raging boner from time to time. <laughs> That's what we need. That's awesome. And then That's there awesome. was a, uh, we kill a monster, and I actually I was in Paris, and I had this idea. I kind of came up with this uh, this really, really sweet um, vampire who just happened to be gay, and his name was Gary. And he was just giant. And he, he, he wasn't hurting anybody, but he was so big that he needed to die. Hmm. And so I'm like, wow, what if somebody was so big, the only way you can stake him was the uh, Empire State, I mean the um, Eiffel Tower. Tower. Right. So yeah, we had a... So, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. basically one of those things, it's, kind of, it's coming to fruition, I may have just kind of, but we're, we kill somebody that way, okay. in San Francisco. So okay, yeah. alright. So yeah, and it's a lot of yeah, punching up. So when you're doing these three issues, are you interested in doing more after that, or is this just kind of like your trial, like, uh, maybe I don't like comics? No, I really dig it. Yeah? I really, really, really dig it. Would you, would you ever try to do it solo? Because uh, writing a comic is very different than writing a book or a screenplay or anything like that. I mean, that. the thing, it's like, you really have to get, I would have to like take about a two solid weeks and just do nothing but Buffy. Because I need to get all the voices right. in my head. Right. I've got Xander. Okay. I would hope so. And I, I, got, I got Giles as a 13 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two I have. And now you're writing a, a, an original graphic novel, let me look up the name here, End of the Light. Into uh, the Light. Into the Light, all right, well I got that wrong, sorry about that. Well, I'm gonna write End of the Light. Thank you're you. Have, oh, there you go. I'll do something with End of the Light. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna want a little piece of that action. What's that one? That, what, what, you can have that much of this video. Yeah, I, I understand. Because I, all I added was one word. But. What did the thing, the, the, the song that, that, that you two wrote for Spider-Man? Uh, that was... Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, well, that, that, that was... That, no, Spider-Man, it's Spider-Man Spider like Into the Dark or something like that, isn't it? But yeah, but it was a, such a... Like, uh, it'll come to me. Carry <laughs> on, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> but talk about, you now you're writing a, a graphic novel, you're writing this solo, right? Yeah. This is all you. So, uh, first off, are you confident as a writer? Obviously, you're confident as a musician, as an actor. Is, 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 do you have that same confidence with your writing? Yeah. <laughs> There's a little hesitation uh, there. Well, I don't want... Uh, um, humility is important for happiness. But, uh, yeah, I've been writing um, for, for a long time in different sure. formats. Sure. Um, and uh, I... I, don't, I huh. I think I'm more com I have more confidence in being able to tell if something sucks when I read it than I do writing. So, okay. you know, I'll write something, oh, it sucks. I can, I can tell. So okay. I'll just go back and rewrite it until I don't have that feeling anymore. I'm like, okay, now it's starting to lift off. I can, right. I can feel it's starting to bubble. Okay. Um, and the, the story had been kicking around in my head so long that it really just kind of, it just left out really quickly. And I was happy with it pr pretty quickly. I mean, I went back over it and kept working on it. And you know, taking, taking your initial idea and then squeezing it down to a comic book form, you really have to understand what's important right. and what nice little bits you have and uh, expansions that you have in moments and in characters and stuff that you just can't afford, you don't have time sure. to go there. So it becomes a little bit like haiku. Right. You, know, you really have to, to, to know where the spine is and stick to that. Uh, tell us a little bit about the story you're, you're writing for uh, your graphic novel here. Yeah. Um, uh, he, I, I thought that it was, you know, having a secondary character on a show means, especially mine, you know, like, 
Xander is still in the same town, you know, he's hanging out with Buffy a lot, he's a lot in the scripts, but my character would kind of come in quickly and then get out right. and let you guys tell the story. So I thought the most interesting part of uh, my years on the show was that, that time when he got his soul and then he, just to see him try to figure out what to do with it. Um, and trying to find a way to explore that without going angel. Okay. I remember I went to Joss once and I was like, Joss, man, we should do a spinoff on Spike. It would be awesome. And he's like, yeah, vampire, male vampire spinoff of Buffy. What should we call it? Angel? <laughs> yeah, so that was dead in the water. So, <laughs> so you know, how do you, how, how do you... What a jerk, I mean. <laughs> no, he's so <laughs> funny he's when he way. does it, you know? Ooh, let's, what do we supposed to call that? <laughs> Part of the way that I decided to do that is, is just inherent in the character, which is, you know, it's funny to see Spike fail. Yeah. And it's also kind of dramatic to see him get frustrated while he's failing. And it's not that he's going to go angel-like and go brood about his failure with a fireplace and a big mansion. Right. He's going to be stripped down. He's going to be an underdog. Uh, and, um, and you can just see him tripping over himself trying to do the right thing and failing to do that. Does this take place in season six or seven? Because there are, there are conflicting reports online about seven. that. It is definitely seven. Yeah. All right. So now, let's go back to your Buffy days. You're working with Joss. Uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a remarkable show at the time because there was really nothing else like it. Today, vampire fiction is everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious if at the time in working with Joss, you obviously saw that there was a lot of smarts there. But did you ever think, yeah, this is the guy who could be behind one of the biggest movies of all time. He could, he could be you know, one of the guys behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Did you see that potential in him at the time? What, did I ever think that Joss would be working with the amazing Robert Downey Jr.? Sure, we can start there. <laughs> I, you know, I, to my credit, there, Mr. Ego, here we go. No, no. But no, seriously, like I came from, I came from theater where you are working with like really great authors, but they're usually dead, you know? Um, and I, I came on the show, you know, like Shakespeare, Moliere, all these people, like, great, but he's dead, you know, he's not going to do anything. Um, uh, and I, re I recognized really quickly that Joss was an incredible writer, Marty as well, all of them on the, mm -hmm. on the show, um, was incredible. And I was, I would, mostly in interviews, I would not want to talk about my character, I, wouldn't talk, I would want to talk about Joss Whedon and mm -hmm. what a genius he was. And Joss told me one day on the set that he felt like he seemed more intelligent when I described him than when he did interviews himself. And I was like, well, yeah, because you're humble. You're not going to really say all of that. Sure. Uh, but uh, I always felt that Buffy was actually better on the page than it was on the, on the TV screen. There was the, when you read the scripts, there, was, there was a delightful energy to it that because of the crush of television, I mean, you're, we, we work 12 to 20 hours a day. We were trying to get everything in, but you don't always succeed in getting every little tiny thing in. And um, I, yeah, I, I was, I was, I've been a fan of Joss since the moment I saw his stuff. What about you? Did you, did you see that potential there back then? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was. It's, it was so strange because we were all new. Like, you know, it was Joss's first show. It was, it was everyone's pretty much first show. Right. I mean, Sarah had gone from from daytime. So at the time, Joss was like the biggest uh, script doctor in town. So I remember we were at his house before we shot the presentation. Um, and he, had, I, I think he got a phone call from Spielberg because uh, Spielberg needed his, uh, his help with Twister. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right. You know, <laughs> it's like, I was just hoping, you know what I mean? I just, I knew that my life had changed. So there was just, so being there from the bottom floor, I was just like, cool, man. Spielberg, awesome. Yeah. We yeah. are in. He must be good. Yeah. He must be good. And then we started doing it, and it was like, the only thing that I know is that it was the easiest stuff when Joss wrote an episode. And most of the writers, actually. It was so easy to memorize. I could look at it twice, and I would have it. It was just yep. so... And then when he directed, it's kind of, it's sometimes... I, I can't put it into words, so I put it in... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, the, I, go, I go beyond words. I go into... I go into I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah. My memory of doing, of doing Buffy was basically being really tired, and, but if I got the lines right and I was on my mark, so I was in my light, we would move on. And then you'd look at it and be like, wow, what a genius moment. What, how incredible. And I, got, I, I swear to God, it's the writing. Mm -hmm. if, if you say those words and get off, 
stage before you make a fool of yourself, they're going to make you look really good. You talked about how reading the scripts had a certain flavor that sometimes didn't always translate to the screen. Having read the comics, do you think that maybe the comics can capture that flavor in a different way uh, than, say, what happened with TV production and editing and notes from studios and all that kind of stuff? Have you, have you found that that quality is back in the comics in any way? Comics are different, though. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're written bigger because you can do it bigger. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the great things about Buffy was that there were the, the subtleties, you know, in relationships. And, you know, I mean, uh, but they, that still has that. But, like, things are just much, there's a lot more magic involved now. You know, it's, so it's, it's hard to really kind of juxtapose the two because they're, they're two completely different. But different there is genres. something about what you said that, that um, I, I think you're totally wrong. So I'm just going to say oh, this. I'm please. just kidding. Um, um, I, you don't have to put your script through the crush Yeah, of I don't production. agree with that. <laughs> you don't have to, you know, in comic books, you don't have to uh, go through such an arduous process of production to get that, that to be a servable right. dish, sure. you know. It, it really is, if, if, if you feel like the artist is getting it, uh, it's a really, a, it's a much more simple process. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's simple to, to draw for a comic book, but, uh, but uh, it is, it's not as labor intensive, there's not as many people involved. There's, there's not many, as many, many barriers things. to get to that point, too. Yeah. yeah, and not as many things that can go wrong. Interesting. Uh, finishing up, right before you got here. Less was, suits. Less suits? People who should not be making artistic decisions aren't making them. In the comics, it's just, boom, oh, this yeah. is what we have. Yep. It, it's yeah. not diluted. Yep. I was trying to be nice that by was, saying less barriers, but you went right suits. for the, the yeah. yeah, that's absolutely That was great about Joss, too, is that he would run interference with all the higher-ups. Yeah. He, he not afraid to, to take on a fight? Constantly. Well, yeah. when we moved to UPN, God. they just said, you, you, you've got carpet. Oh, that was great. You guys are pretty good. We don't, yeah. They didn't have a standards and practices office. They had nobody to tell the writers, no, that's too naughty, you can't do it. So really? we had one year to do everything that we couldn't do before. And now you, you, can, you compare it to Game of Thrones or whatever else is on, and, they're like, and, and it looks tame by comparison. But at the time, people were like, you're doing soft porn. Yeah. On television, what are you? What well, are you I would guys like doing? to do hardcore porn, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could probably do. Mm -hmm. it. Oh yeah, and make it tasteful. Oh yeah. Um, the thing with uh, like Joss would always—he was very. We had had a conversation once where he knew when we were on the WB. I think you could only say a bitch once, and oh, so man. he would always he would put in four things that he knew that he needed to save this one line. Right. So right. he put in four because they just even if the script is perfect, you can know. Uh, they needed that to put their two cents too in. Edgy. So he was like, I need that. It's like, all right, fine, I'll give it to you, but I need to save this. So right. he, he learned, because he had a line taken away that he didn't want it, so he's like, He oh, learned fine, how I'll to handle standards and practices. That's yeah. awesome. I remember, I remember asking, I wanted more blood on a victim. Like, I'm, I'm ripping this person's throat out. I want, you know, there should be some blood going on. They're like, no, actually, we have a two drop rule. <laughs> really? I'm a vampire? Come on, <laughs> man. Yes. Like, so really? Crazy. Yeah, that was frustrating. I, I want to finish up by talking to you about, and I, just, I, I don't know much about this, so bear with me here. I, I probably just don't either. It. You did a web comic about koala bears? Yes. Very bad koalas. Very bad koalas. What, what, what is this? Like, I'm totally new to this. So say I'm a studio executive, I'm one of those suits, and you want to pitch a, a, a koala bear series. How would you pitch that? So basically, it's, <laughs> we, got, we got two koala bears who are, who are looking essentially for the portal to get back to, to, to Earth. Okay. And uh, they fuck shit up along the way. <laughs> so the the more the more they try to do good, they do bad, and that puts them back further. Why why a webcomic? Why how'd you get into that? Well, my partner and I, Steve Steve Loader, who now is writing movies for um, Ishtar, Pixar, whatever, same thing. Mm. Totally different. Thing. Um, <laughs> uh, we just we just kind of had this uh, this idea, and we just kind of because what I, I I did a show for him uh, the. The animated show, and then I'm like, I've got these ideas, and we kind of got together and came up with these very. If, if you haven't seen them, there's like 26. Oh yeah. Online, yeah. Oh. It should. It's, it's it's some funny stuff. We there's a lot of poopies. <laughs> there's a, there's there's like Never Nazis. Gets old. Poop, that, no. You have an inner 12 year old that you fully embrace, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just afraid to have kids. You know what I mean? Sure. Well, because you've got because one once, living inside once you. Once they apparently. turn 13, I'm not going to understand anymore. It's like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James, Nick, absolute pleasure having you out here. I wish Thank I could say the same. I'm joking. Shake, no, I'm going to shake his hand. All right, give me your no, hand. No, I don't. No. You've been Brendan. I he been loves Brendan. you. He's I, only like that with people that he loves deeply. Because I, I get it. I get it. I'm there. Very apprehensive. No, knock it off. 
Jonah Weil, and this is CBR-TV.